Have mercy on me, O God, for people assail me. They fight me all the day long and oppress me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome. Father Chris here celebrating Mass for the fifth Monday of Lent. Uh, for those of you at home, uh, please pray with me, the guardian angel prayer. Guardian angel at my side, go to the church for me, kneel in my place at Holy Mass where I desire to be. At offertory in my stead, take all I am and own, and place it as a sacrifice upon the altar throne. At Holy Consecration's bell, adore with seraph's love, my Jesus hidden in the host come down from heaven above. When the priest communion takes, so bring my Lord to me, that his sweet heart may rest on mine, and I, his temple, be. Brothers and sisters in Christ, again, welcome. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death, but Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste, to Daniel the elder said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty, Although the Lord says, the innocent and the just, you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you your head. The angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Put it into one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, offspring of Canaan, not of Judah. Beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you your head also. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, and by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In burdened pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. 
He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. You are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. But early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses, now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? They said this to test him, so they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. When they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. And Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, if now one do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> hey guys, welcome back. We truly see uh, two great stories that, that give us a good sense of, of, of God. Of God's love, of God's justice, of God's mercy. You know, in the Old Testament, we see the justice of God very much. Uh, that these two elders that should know way better. Uh, I mean, you're not talking about uh, you're not even talking about committing adultery. You're talking about forcing somebody into adultery. It's like, wow. Okay, so uh, it's not even that, that 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 she's been given a freedom to to choose in this, but she has been given the freedom to choose in this. Susanna is very much chosen. She is very much going to be on the side of God. She is in essence said, uh, there, we chose the, I chose the shorter version today, there's a longer version, uh, where you basically see in it, you can go back and read it certainly, uh, it's in the book of Daniel, but nonetheless, the longer story has, has her being set up by these two wicked men uh, to, to commit adultery with them, and she chooses no. So very much so, she's on the side of God, she chooses I, no matter what, I don't care what you might condemn me with, I am not, and, and, and I could be put to death. That's the bottom line. She could have been put to death through this. And she basically says, I'm not, whatever happens to me, I will die before I will uh, sin against God. You know, and so, so knowing that, uh, they, they, they force the issue. Uh, and then in essence, uh, when they go to trial to have her killed, Daniel stands up because the Holy Spirit moves. This is how God works with us. That, that there are always people there. Now, that's not saying that Daniel, Daniel could have just resisted and said, hey, you know what, uh, whatever, uh, you know, I have something moving inside of me, but I'll just let it go. No, that's where the, when the Holy Spirit moves, that's the way. When you have something inside of you telling you you need to do something, those are always, that i found in my life, the best times to act. That time to step up and stand forward and say, I am standing up for justice and truth in this matter. It's exactly what Daniel does in this. And he's a young man, by the way. So you have to realize he's a young man. He has no right in a certain way to stand up when he's got a bunch of elders there and to override them. That was like really a bad thing to do. I mean, you never stood up against your elders uh, unless there was a really grave reason for doing so. And of course, he stands up because there was a grave reason. So that's the mercy of God, the justice of God moving, uh, certainly to condemn the two men that were responsible for almost having Susanna killed in the same way that they were put to death. So we shift gears, and there's something beautiful that happens in the, 
Uh, the gospel passage, uh, not the gospel, I'm sorry, the verse before the gospel is actually from Ezekiel 33, 11. God says through Ezekiel, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked men, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. You know, the difference is here, that, and, and that was Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, Susanna, the reality is that the two men, they had many opportunities to, to just kind of back down, to say, well, you know, really, we didn't, they would have been in big trouble, but they wouldn't have been killed. You know, it's right up until the point where they went to trial with her. Once that happened, it was over. Uh, but nonetheless, in the gospel today, we see, the, we see the scripture from Ezekiel being brought dead on through Jesus Christ, who, of course, is God. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man or woman, says the Lord, but rather in his or her conversion that he or she may live. So what we see here is Jesus being brought, this adulterer is brought in. They're dead to right to stone her, by the way. They're dead to right. They could have stoned her. Uh, I'm curious as to what they did with the man. Apparently that wasn't a big deal, but that's, that's a whole other part of the story, I guess. But nonetheless, they've got a reason for bringing her. They want her. They've got her. They don't care about her. That's the other thing. When you look at this, you realize they don't really care about her. They don't, care. They don't give no care uh, about her whatsoever, which in itself is, is, is kind of remarkable in that regard of, of, of them. They could have looked at it and said, well, you know what, uh, you know, out of mercy, maybe we give this lady another chance. You know, maybe for whatever reason she was in adultery, that there's a reason behind it, you know. What Jesus does is remarkable, though. I love this answer. He's got two or three answers that when people are coming at him that he gives that you look at, and you're like, wow. Like when he's uh, with the coin, you know, when he's, he's talking about the coin and trying to trap him, you know, uh, uh, hey, you know, should you pay the tax or not? And he says, show me whose coin it is. They show him Caesar's, whose inscription is on it, Caesar. You know, he's the emperor. Okay, well then give to God what is God's and to Caesar, or give to Caesar what is Caesar's and then God. What is God's? That was amazing. This is another one of those where he basically stands up, he looks around, and he says, he says, all right, I'll tell you what, uh, the person that has not sinned, you throw the first stone to kill this woman. And here's exactly what happens. It starts with the elders, the guys that know better, the ones that have been around long enough that are like, hmm, people know, these people that are around me know the sins I've been involved with. They know that if I, if I throw a stone at this woman, they're going to look at me like, really? Really? You haven't sinned before? We know that you did X, Y, or Z. So they're like, oh, there is no way I'm getting caught in this. Blip. See you, Rock. I'm out of here. Jesus, I'm coming after you later. This is exactly what they did. So they did. Uh, they got him later, but he allowed that, of course. Uh, that's why he was crucified. Um, so, but looking at this, it's amazing because it's exactly what God desires for us. He desires us to repent. He's given this woman a chance, certainly. It's not just about her. It is very much about her. Each person is loved infinitely by God. So yes, he stands up. He stands in the middle. He could have been killed also, uh, but, but he knows. He knows what's going to happen. It's not his time to die. So I, actually, what I just said, scratch that from the record counselor. Um, he knew better. I mean, he, he was God. They were not going to kill him at that moment. So anyway, the point, though, is that uh, he then turns to her and says, uh, uh, has anyone condemned you? No, sir. No one has condemned me. Uh, then Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go. And from now on, do not sin anymore. Please catch that one, because this is the big part where the world says, yeah, a person sins. Who cares? We should forgive them. We should forgive them. You're right. We should forgive them. I agree. But if the purpose is to forgive them so they can go right back into sinning again, that's horrific because at some point in time, they're going to die. And at some point in time, if they die in that sin without being repentant, the justice of God will then have that person away from God for all eternity because that's what they've chosen. So Jesus gives her the perfection to say, I don't condemn you. I want you freed. I want you to know that I love you. I want you to know that God loves you and is very merciful in his love toward you. But please do not sin anymore. You know, that is a structure. That's not to say that she hasn't or wouldn't have fallen back into sin to some degree. But there's some grace that God gives us, especially as being Christian, especially with this as being Catholic. As, as a Catholic, we can go to confession to say, look, I've sinned and I'm sorry, God. And, and it's more than that. I need the sacrament so that I can be closer to you, that I can have the grace, that I can forgive the people in my life, that I can truly do better with the graces that you give me so I can live a better life. Another reason why we should invite our people around us to come to know Jesus, because everything he does for us, everything he says in the gospel, plays such a huge important role in our lives. So my brothers and sisters, this keeps going and going because this is all of what God has said. But when we look at this one area, it's to see how he loves us, but to also see how he calls us to a better walk. That no matter what structure of sin we're locked into, no matter what choices we've made, 
we can and need to start choosing to say, God, help me. That even if I might sin again, but keep helping me to where it becomes less and less and less until it's finally gone, to where I can look back at my life and say, wow, you really have freed me from sin. You really do love me. You really did all the way through have a plan for me. May God continue to bless you, me, and everybody with that knowledge and reality and life. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us now lift up our intentions to our Lord. For the intentions of Pope Francis, for everything our church is doing, that all people might know God's love in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For today's Mass intention for Sister Enda Eileen Byrne, uh, for her community and everybody in her life world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the next group of people in a prayer intention hotline for Rebecca Kennedy, Ed Reeder, Jordan Bates, the Trainers, the Jensens, the Reagans, and Cindy Clarkson, for their families and everybody else in their life world, and everybody else on the prayer intention hotline, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayers. prayers. That corrupt officials may be exposed and stripped of authority, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. That victims of sexual abuse and assault may receive justice and care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. And for all Street shall we pray for this day. For Walter, who is very close to death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Let's not take just a few moments of, of thanking God, but asking God for whatever help we see that we need immediately uh, in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Help of the poor, stir up your power and come to our aid. Make us staunch defenders of the weakest among us and give us zeal for justice. That Christ's rule may reach earth's ends, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. With your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the, the praise and glory of his name. name. For our good and good of all is holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you, as the fruit of bodily penance, a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope and Gregory our Bishop and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Mary Magdalene, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it's not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ. Peace, 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 God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Those of you at home, please join me in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in to bless the sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen indeed.
Let us pray. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, that people who call upon you, that live in a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty, I bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince, the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the throne of souls. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great day and a great week. Uh, be careful, be safe, and also keep with your Lenten promises. Uh, we're almost there. God bless you guys.